So this is the shower and toilet build part two. I'm gonna get straight into it. Check it out. Hi peeps, I'm just sorting out the toilet here. So I've put a noggin in the wall where this this bracket is going to be attaching to. So this bracket is screwed onto the finished wall on the inside and then when the toilet comes down that sits inside of this this little groove here so that stops the toilet from moving about and then you've got the, the rubber suckers here that keep it watertight so basically what I've got I've got the template here the only part of this template I'm going to be using is this top part that corresponds to corresponds to that bracket there so basically what I've done is marked a centre line on the middle hole and then I've marked a centre line on the stud here so I've already had the toilet out and sat this template up and it does sit at the right height so I'm going to drill the holes from the back and then when this board's on I'm going to drill all the way through this wall just with a small drill bit and then that'll show us exactly where this bracket needs to sit and then we can fix it in with the right size screws. The screws that you get are pretty ridiculously big so I'm not going to be able to use them but basically what you want to do is just measure what the width of your finished wall is going to be and pick a screw that's going to seat into this noggin quite well so you've got a nice strong fixing for your toilet there so I'm going to get these drilled and then we'll dry test this without putting the boards on and then once we know it's definitely in the right place then we can board this and put the UPVC boarding on. Third time lucky, in other words, the template is a fucking absolute waste of time. So, if you want to use the template, put it up for some sort of idea of where the hole is going to be, and then try and error to get it in the right place. Or, what I probably would have done in hindsight is measure your centre. Basically the bottom has got these two little grooves here which sit inside of this middle part here so if you can get the distance from the top of the pan to the bottom of this lip here and then if you've got the top of your pan when it's sat in place you can measure down on this button the same distance and then drill your hole. So this middle hole is the right one for me so I'm going to drill, pre-drill the other two corresponding holes and then we can get this boarded new PVC aligned and then toilet sat in place and then we can start looking at getting the bar and mixer in, siliconing it up and the ply, the few PVC sheeting on the ceiling, extract the fan finish, light in, yeah! Sorry I didn't get that bit of video but basically all I've done is screw the bracket on on the back here and then obviously straightened it up and drilled the outside hole so I can take this off now once the boards are on you can just screw put a little uh, self tapping hole through these holes and then we have the holes on inside to fix this little bracket too. So peeps just to show you, I've cut the piece of ply for the back here, that's just a simple rectangle shape basically but to get this opening basically just place the board up and I'm just going to mark around this square which is going to be the opening for the chemical part to pull out of so mark this up, cut this square out 
transfer that onto the UPVC board and then cut it out on that as well. Then when we stick that on, there'll be a nice opening there and our chemical toilet will be able to pull out quite nicely. So I'm gonna do that now, get this plywood stuck on with the UPVC panel and then we'll be getting somewhere. So here's the board with the square cut out. That's the length of it. Cut it in now one complete piece, although I've had to piece this in, so I'm just using scrap bits of old ply. And let's get this cut out and in the shower. So just connecting the electrics up for the toilet flush and this has got a four way block on so basically these two wires here, one to brown, one to blue, I'm going to have to connect the positive and negative, I'm not actually sure what these ones are for, must just be a loop but the instructions aren't the best, obviously positive and negative is all you need anyway so then we're going to connect into there and then connect this to the water feed and then that's the toilet in. Just need to ply off the back of here and then create create an opening here. You are? Yeah, you're on YouTube now, look. Say hi. <laughs> Don't get shy. <laughs> So I've just connected the electric and water feeds up to the toilet and then basically on the bracket that's on the wall here you just want to get it near enough where it needs to be, put your finger in to find where the little slot is in the middle, line it up with the middle of the bracket and then just push this, push the actual system up to the wall so the rubber seal depresses and then once you've pushed it in as far as you can obviously push in and down at the same time so it clips into the actual bracket at the back here so you can see where the rubbers actually came off on the UPVC so that's just going to need a quick wipe down and then you can see a little gap there at the bottom so I'm going to have to get the silicon gun in there just to silicon that last gap up and then a little gap at the same at the other side in the same place and then the shower tray or the toilet is sealed up so I've seen people putting beads to select them around the underside of the toilet before they sit it in place so I'm not going to bother doing that I don't think it's necessary these lips are over the top and I can't see the water climbing up and out the bottom of the tray but when I've used the shower I'll take this back door off and have a check underneath once this tray is out the way to see if there's any water that's uh, sitting in underneath. If needs be I can always take this out it isn't silicon in in any way or for shape or form and I can give it a test so I'm gonna hook up the pump now to see if this seal is actually sealed and seated properly and then once we've got electric we can give this bad lad a test oh this is inside of the stud wall where the shower riser is actually going to be mounted so i thought i'd put these two bits of video together as you can see i've just got the shower riser out there i'm deciding where i wanted to sit which was as far over into the corner as possible and I wanted the shower head to be able to rise up 
near enough touching the ceiling so once I'd getting the position for that I measured up and then just put the relevant noggins in and then that is where I'm going to attach the shower riser to after all is done as you can see here I have recorded the measurements and measured away from the actual end of the stud wall and that's where I know where to drill for this actual riser to be fitted. After that it's a case of just following the measurements that you've got recorded, fitting the shower riser and then once the shower riser is fitted you can get your bar and mixer in there and then you can hang your shower head for the first time. After that it's a case of fitting your bar mixer, you want yourself a good adjustable spanner or one that suits the size of the nut that's actually going to be screwed onto there. The hard part's done now, all the stuff's in the wall and it's just a case of tightening down on the front. So that is the last of the wall boards on, I'm just going to use this same stuff to clad the door up as well. And 100% figured out how I'm going to do that, but there's just the cladding to go on. I'm just going to use tongue and groove cladding on the ceiling. So, I fit the shower rail, basically worked out what the centers were before I actually put this wall together and I recorded the measurements in my phone so I knew how many centimeters from this or millimeters from this wall it was and how many millimeters from the tray it was, and that's fixed nice and securely on a button that is buried in that wall so yeah just fix the front of the mixer tap on and obviously the shower head to see what it's going to look like so peeps just got this old shower door which has got decent seals on it and it's got a hinge system didn't get on video uh, taking the frame off from the outside it was basically just four screws so I've had a look at it and I think I might be able to do a chop shop job on this the only thing that's going to be a bit of a pain in the ass is this is glass and obviously the door is too big for the opening what is in there at the moment so I've had to take the beading seal out from the outside I'm going to have to get rid of this glass and then get some perspex which is the same thickness as the glass to replace it and then hopefully the seal what I've taken out should go back in so just going to take this frame out from outside the glass chop it down to the the width that I want and then I need to order some perspex still so that'll be a few days down the line but I'm going to make a start on this today so once all of the door was dismantled I just proceeded to get the measurements for the actual frame itself so if you're going to retrofit a shower door like this the first thing you want to do is make sure that the opening is square so just measured up it wasn't square it was out by five mil so i've just took this bottom button button off i'm actually going to use a button top and bottom and i'm just going to leave these walls open because there's no need to have them this is just gives a, a step for the actual shower door to step into and the button at the top gives us something to fix it you know, decent and I can just fix into these side walls through the frame so yeah you want to make sure it's square it wasn't square it was out by five mil so I've just took this bottom bottom off bottom button off and planed it down so I've planed that down five mil fixed that back in place and now I'm gonna measure the side frame as them are the ones that actually sit on the outside of the frame the bits that sit top and bottom actually screw in from the outside so you want to cut down whichever ones are lying all the way to the outside if you know what I mean so if it's your top and bottom button you want to cut them first if it's your side buttons you want to cut them first so I'm going to cut them to length see what gap I've got in the middle cut me top and bottom frame and then we'll go from there with the door so just cutting down the outside frame to length and width here when the whole shower was dismantled give the, it a good clean as this had just come from a yard and it was full of mud and cloth so once I'd done that just want to piece the shower back together 
it is worth noting i didn't have a problem with the outside frame but the inside door and putting the door and the frame together did have to do it one or two times or three or four <laughs> and i would advise to take note of how the shower door is actually put together if you are actually going to be retrofitting one as sometimes they're not as plain and simple as you think especially when hinges are involved so it's worth doing a little bit of due diligence first and it'll save you a bit of time in the long run after that as you can see just dry fitting the outside frame here i would advise you to give yourself five millimeters play uh, if you want to fit it tight you can fit it tight if you think you can do so so just a quick note if you're doing the same <coughs> retro fitting little tip these threads here what the screws actually screw into if you've made a cut the circular bar that you actually screw into won't be threaded so if you thread that with a screw first before you start to screw it together it'll save you stripping the screw head or cross threading and just make your life a bit easier. So at this point, the door that actually hinges on the outside frame has been cut down. You want to keep all the parts to one side, make sure you don't lose anything. And basically, the width for your cut for the outside frame should, in essence, be the same as the cut for the width of the door. So should be able to measure what you've taken off the width of the outside frame and take the same off the door. That's how I went about it and it worked well. If you look closely there, just at the left hand side, right at the front of the plywood table, on the front of the table, you can see two pieces of off cuts. One of them is from the outside frame and one of them is from the door and they are the same length. So. Yeah, obviously make sure you do all your me measurements, measure and measure again before you're cutting this down because if you're getting this from a reclamation yard or something like that, you are gonna only going to have one chance for this cut. Good luck! Right, that is the door frame chopped down and constructed. So just need to dismantle the main frame, sit this inside on these pivots here these pivots and then we will see whether it works yeah so that's the frame resized it's an absolute nightmare to get back together a little bit of advice take photos of what you're dismantling before you do it but i'm getting there in the end and just going to make some adjustments basically this box section here this is would normally sit inside of whatever screen or wall that you've got sitting but what i'm going to do is i'm going to nip the back lug off both sides and then i'm going to sit basically a button inside of the the half half box here and then i'll put a screw through from this side from the front and then the front will be overlapped by wood this is obviously looking a bit wonky and stuff at the minute, but this is all getting taken apart to put the perspex or the cut glass back in there. Right peeps, the shower frame is fit now, 
temporarily in place and just put a screw basically in each corner so happy with our shutting opening and shutting so I'm gonna show you how I've basically fixed it in <clears throat> got the button square button along the back as you can see this part on the front I haven't cut off so this one is that wide and I've just cut the lug off that side so basically the front of that wing there is just screwed straight into that button and it's exactly the same on the other side so basically I come in the shower now we've got that there so basically what I'm going to do is take the frame out got some UPVC square edging which will go along here and into this little millimetre gap here I'll just silicone that on so that'll be a void in the back of there but it'll be plenty rigid enough and I'm also going to put square UPVC edging on the top button there and on the footing down here so the UPVC edging will go over the lip of the shower tray here so there's no drama of any water getting underneath here and then there will that will go underneath the framework of the shower tray as well and then I'll just put a bead of silicon wherever it needs to be put and on the inside here the button wood button and the aluminium framework here are actually flush with each other so I've just got some 45 millimeter uh, flat UPVC strip and I'm just going to silicon a big strip up there all the way up to the actual framework here but I won't be doing that until the shower, shower screen has been fit and it is actually in place for the last time as obviously it's going to be overlapping and I'll be putting silicon down the back there so I'm going to take the shower frame out and get these ones cladded up and then we can look at getting this sprayed up and uh, perspex sheeting put in here to replace the glass and then we laugh on. Yeah! Right peeps, so as you can see the new PVC strip is over the ledge now. I couldn't get it to overhang the tray but that's not a big deal. I'm just going to run a bead of silicon along this gap here and I'll put a blob in there because there's actually end grain in the end of there put a little bit of silicon in these gaps here obviously told you about the strip that goes along there but happy with that all that edge is sealed in nicely that's sealed in just need to put a blob of silicon in the top of there and now fill in all these gaps silicon all this in and get the extractor fitted and then we're pretty much there once the door's done happy day just doing the bathroom ceiling here with this UPVC tongue and groove cladding so basically use this collar to draw around for the extractor fan just cut the hole a little bit bigger the collar that goes on the top of here will cover these gaps in round here and then this is the hole cut out for the 12 volt light so I'm going to cut the remainder for the ceiling and then piece it to get these together and I'll stick them up with the adhesive all in one piece. So you might have heard us mention about getting the shower door sprayed up. Just want to give a shout out to Spray Tech Joinery. They are the firm that has sprayed both the shower door and the kitchen for our van and they've done an amazing job. Very, very high quality paint and very hard wearing and they've getting the kitchen looking very very nice and also the shower door looking brand new so I'm gonna post a link to their page in the description if you need any similar work doing check them out and I would highly recommend so I said I was gonna fit the tongue and groove cladding all in one piece I did try that but it didn't work out being too easy and I found it easier to actually fit them piece by piece so just do yours whichever whichever which way it makes it easier for yourself basically 
So I had a million and one jobs to do, so I hadn't really thought too much about how I was going to do the shower screen, but after measuring up the glass that came out of there, it turned out that it was about four millimeters in width or depth, however you want to see it. And this UPVC cladding is actually two millimeters a piece. So what I did was measured up the size of the screen and I've just cut two pieces exactly the same out of the actual UPVC cladding. And then after that, just proceeded to stick them together with some premium adhesive. both the boards stuck together now take off the protective film and you just want to have your inside door frame fit together and then just basically remove one corner screw so you can slot the board in make sure it's fitting okay then I remove the sheeting and put a strip or a line of silicone or white white silicon in side of the actual frame slot just to give that a little bit of an extra seal and then once I'd done that I refit the shower screen put the frame back together and then you just see us wiping off any excess silicon here and then I started the painstaking job of putting this seal back in this job probably took me about an hour and a half possibly a little bit more I can't, I can't exactly remember but painstaking job but it was worth it in the end literally just had to put it in bit by bit and really take your time on this and obviously with the frame being a different size I had to make small incisions to fit the corners and you're just gonna have to suck it and see and try and figure out a way to do that yourself it's pretty pretty straightforward just gotta persevere so as you can see in the middle of the actual shower screen there I've just put two board clamps and I've linked them together because one of them couldn't reach from one side to the other and when I was just putting the footing of the actual clamp on the side it was just slipping off so I just notched out a couple of bits of wood there and then placed them on the side of the shower screen just to clamp it together to stop it from bowing because the screen was actually falling out until I got the shower seal in there. And before it was sent off to spray tech to get sprayed, I just masked up the actual door seals with masking tape to stop them getting paint on them. So the door is done. The seal's actually on the other side. I just flipped it over to clean off any spare silicon that smudged out of the edges. Got the frame here, gonna put that together and fix this inside of it and then it's going in the van. So I already had the four screw holes in the corner of the frame from when I'd pre-fit the frame earlier. So I just reused them. I then drilled some more pilot holes down the left and right hand sides of the actual framework and <clears throat> drilled them into the wood battens as I showed you earlier just to make it nice and solid and rigid and then once that was in place that's it there for the last time and that's the finished article people nice and secure hinge and door waterproof and no shower curtain happy days so I've just used a hole saw on the shower tray so basically fit this metal grate and just use a hole saw that is the size for this little grate to sit through so put a big bead of silicon around the all the way around here before it gets pressed in so you basically just want it that big so that drops through and then from the underside of the van that's where this comes in with the rubber gasket on the top 
So that'll come all the way up through the metal chassis at the bottom, through the insulation, through the two bits of plywood, and then that'll clamp to the underside of the shower tray. And then this will go on top and the screw will go through. So I haven't got a hole saw that is the right size for this. So I'm gonna use a jigsaw to cut this round. And then once I'm just through the metal chassis, I'll use a wood hole saw to cut something that is a similar size to this and then I'm just going to have to be careful with that not to go too far up and up through the shower tray so I'll just take a little bit out at a time you can feel a little bit of relief when you get through each board so I shouldn't drill through the underside of the shower tray and then it's just a case of siliconing these up and then putting them together and putting the screw in and then we can look at attaching our waste pipe so let's get that done so just a quick note, I did say there that I was going to use the jigsaw on the underside of the van to get through the metal. did try this but I couldn't get my jigsaw turned so I did have to go and buy some hole saws that were slightly bigger than the actual waste itself. But as Jen knows all too well, I never turned down the opportunity to buy new tools. So as you've just seen there, I just measured the centre of the actual waste, pre-drilled the shower tray with a pilot hole then use a 38mm hole saw to make the cut for the actual metal grate to sit inside of and then proceeded to drill down through the insulation just so it had space to sit nicely in the tray there. Once I'd done that, put a good uh, bead of mould resistant white silicone in the actual grate itself, give it a quick clean down and then just pushed it down into the tray. After that put a bead around the actual waste itself in between the waste and the rubber gasket then another bead on top of the rubber gasket and then I needed somebody's help at this point and somebody under the van just holding the waste for me while I was putting the screw in the actual grate. That just makes it all nipped up and tightened together once you've done that, you can wipe away any excess silicon that is smudged to the inside of the tray. Just a quick one for all you wonderful folk. Right, just a quick one on this wall here for the outer shower. Basically just constructed that little spice rack and I'm going to use 9mm ply to ply line this structure here and then it's also the trim's going to overlap these screws here and a little bit of the frame all the way around and then I'm going to cut the door out and that's just going to be hinged to allow access for the toilet so I'm going to try and cut this whole thing out of one sheet of ply so basically I've measured the whole square of the ply and I've cut that out over there and then just piece by piece getting all the little millimetre to millimetre measurements I have transferred the pencil lines over to this bit of ply so as you can see where this is scribbled out here get out the shadow that's scribbled there that's the spice rack and down here there is the toilet door which is a square there obviously bear in mind that everything is in reverse and then you can see here and to the bottom that is the shower door so obviously this bit that's coming out the shower door these corners are going to be joined so you have got to plunge your you've got to plunge the saw down into the board so just take it nice and steady when you go in and that is what I've just done for this cut here. These ones that are close to the edge, what I would adv advise is to use your rip saw guide and then plunge the saw down with the guide. You can also do it on these bottom edges here. Might have to free on this top edge here, but if you just make sure your saw is fairly straight, drop it down as slowly as possible. And if you see it just off center a little bit, just adjust it, it's not gonna make probably only make a millimeter of difference which you can get away with and apart from that I'm gonna get this cut and then we'll see if the pencil lines and measurements that I've made are 
match up and whether it'll drop straight in so like I say around the spice rack I wanted it quite want it quite tight here so there's no gaps but around the shower door if it's a little bit out or a little bit in it doesn't really matter because there's literally going to be white shown here anyway so once the plies on I'll just put a little bead of white silicon down the seam just to neaten all that up and also along the bottom and also the toilet door it doesn't matter if you're a little millimetre in or a little millimetre out because basically I've cut the door in the middle of these wood battens so when you open it up you're not going to be able to tell the difference you know the only cut that needs to be quite accurate is this spice rack because it is going to be permanently on shore and I want the ply quite tight into there so a, millim a millimetre measured measured and marked that and I'm going to take the line off as the would say so when I cut I'm taking the pencil line off and then that should get me near enough millimetre perfect so let's get this cut just one more thing I didn't mention when you are plunging your saw into a, a square and you're going to be leaving the remaining ply complete around it you can only cut so far into the corner and then the ply is going to be on an angle so you don't want to go over where you need where your pencil line is so you're going to have a little tab there and with that i'm just going to drop the jigsaw through the ply and just give it a little movement up into the corner just to neaten that up and then the, the door and the squares that i want out of there should drop out quite nicely So just a quick close up on the catch me in the fall. Just a quick close up on the corners as you can see there is the little tag tags of wood where the, the blade has been on the upward motion so it's gonna drop the jigsaw down through the slot here and just nip them off on every corner. And then that's the shower door cut out, finish off the toilet door and then the spice rack and then we'll give it a dry fit template cut out haven't tried it in place yet so moment of truth and we'll see if this fits in so not perfect but I'm happy with 
how it looks just need to take a little bit off of this corner here and then as you can see there's a small gap down there and a little gap along the side here but not too bad might just put a bead of the brown corking along here just to dress it up and then on the corners I've got some UPVC corner trim to bridge from the UPVC trim here round the corner and that will just finish off these cabinets here once these spots are touched in and then we'll just fit the door just going to surface mount the hinges and then that'll just have a little catch to keep that from coming open but happy with that that's dressed the door up nicely we've got a full wall here to do whatever we want with beside of what yet but we're going to get this out nip a little bit off and get it fit and then i'll just use a ping gun with some small pins around the the areas and that'll be job done happy doors so just a quick note here before i actually place the board up against the stud wall i just marked where the members were on the area between the toilet door and the spice rack just so i'll get some pins in there and make sure that that wasn't flapping about either once i've done that just proceeded to fit the toilet door basically the bit of ply that i cut out of there originally is the bit that i use for the door and the width of the blade is the perfect amount to make sure that the door opens and closes nice and snug so that's a bathroom video complete i hope it helped you out might have been a bit long-winded but hopefully it'll help complete novices or beginners out and thanks for watching comment with all your replies if you enjoyed it or any tips that you could give to anybody else if you liked it and it helped you out like and subscribe show some support back and see you in the next video people peace peace